We're going to interview David Bennett. Who is David Bennett? He is Sotheby's worldwide chairman in the jewelry division and co-chair of Sotheby Switzerland. He is one of the most powerful person in the auctioneer world. He sold seven times 100 carat diamonds at record prices. Let's find out who David Bennett is and his successful career. Welcome, David. Thank you. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Tell us, uh, David, you, how did you start your career? And mm. now you're world chairman of Sotheby for jewelry. So what was the lifeline of this life of yours? Well, it's an interesting question because actually it was very much by chance. Um, I left university with a degree in philosophy and I had this idea of uh, making films, which I still would like to do, but uh, I got a bit distracted along the way. Um, and uh, my father, who you know, was very 19th century really, um, thought that, you know, that Hollywood was not the sort of thing an English gentleman got involved with, sadly. And so he invited me for lunch with a friend of his who was a director of Sotheby's in those days. And to cut a long story short, he, this chap made Sotheby's sound so exciting and interesting and so on that I agreed to go on a one year's training course in all the sort of fields of Sotheby's and at the end of it he said well you can make up your mind what you want to do. Um, it was a great year but unfortunately the, the, the plan changed because at the end of it we fell into the first oil crisis in 1974 and suddenly the world was in a very different place, you know, industries were laying people off, London was no longer, you know, booming. It was a very different thing. And so, at the end of the course, in this environment, the, this friend of my father came up to me and said, look, there's a job coming up in the jewelry department. Um, I said, I know nothing about jewelry. I don't even know how to spell sapphire. So he said, no, 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 you should take it. It's going to be exciting. Promise. I said, I don't know anything about it. He said, you will learn. And he said, they have sales in Zurich in those days. You know, there'll be some traveling. It's, so I thought, well, you know, I need a job. The job market was looking terrible, so I took it. And that's how, how it began. I then uh, decided that if I'm going to do jewelry, I ought to learn as much as I can about it. So I went out and bought some gold and silver and a Bunsen burner and learned how to, I didn't need to know, but I wanted to know how metals work, how they interact, how do you solder, how do you set a stone, you know, just the basics. And uh, started learning about classical jewellery, Greek and Roman jewellery, even though I don't sell it. So well, you, you've had an extraordinary career and a very successful one, as well, I may thank say. You. Yes, yeah. very kind. Yeah. And the last two months, you have uh, had the gavel in Hong Kong and had the biggest auction record for gemstones in Geneva as well. You had a new record in Geneva for a pair of earrings. Mm. So how do you stay so grounded, David? Because I see you as a very human, approachable person, well, and that it doesn't go to your head. That's a huge compliment. I take it at that. Thank you very much. Well, I, I don't know. I suppose it's simply because um, I don't think, when I'm selling something for 71 million, the pink diamond, uh, a couple of months ago, I don't think even a $71 million. To me, it's, it, it's a figure, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have any great interest uh, in myself in, in owning these things. I'm not sort of passionate about owning them. I spend my life with them, so I don't need to own them. <laughs> and the wonderful thing is like having a great collection that changes every day. And to me, the excitement of this job has always been the, the chase. You know, for example, last week I was in a bank vault in Geneva and saw the most wonderful thing I'd never seen before. You know, that's, that's what the excitement is. There's always this, the unusual, the the search for the extraordinary. Uh, these earrings that we sold were the most extraordinary pair of pink and blue diamonds. I mean, off the scale of rare. And they sold for 57 million, which is probably something like four times the previous record for a pair of earrings. Um, and that's it, you know, it was a job well done. Um, but, it's, but it's not like 57 million, oh my God. You know, it's, it is what it is, I look at it I hope to look at it rather dispassionately and, and uh, stay on the job, stay focused. And indeed, but you've, had, you've sold uh, seven times 100 carat diamonds or gemstones. Yeah. Yeah. That's extraordinary. 
So let us have a peek behind the curtain. How do you get the, the resources and the contacts for these people to give their jewelry, their precious jewelry to you for the auction? Well, I mean, um, people, I mean, you know, when, when you successfully sell at auctions and wonderful jewels or wonderful gemstones or collections, uh, people tend to then contact you afterwards and, and that's how it happens. I mean, for example, the Sunrise Ruby, which is uh, by far the world record for a ruby so far at auction, um, came to me through a phone call from the owner who literally rang up and said, uh, after I just sold the previous world record, which was eight billion or something, and said, look, I've got a wonderful ruby. Well, of course, very often after you've sold a world record, whatever, people ring up and say, I've got something similar, you know, because they always dream that they have something the same. So I sort of said, okay. And so I flew to this particular country where it was, met, met the owner. And interestingly, we spoke about, for the first hour, about everything else but her gemstones. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the relationship between each person and a piece of jewelry is one of the most intimate relationships they have with any object in their life. It's either very often given that, you know, for a wedding gift or a birth of a child or a birthday. So it's always there's something connected with it. Um, and in this particular case, the Ruby had been given to her by her husband, and it, she was very attached to it. So when I eventually saw it, um, she showed me the ruby, and I remember thinking, my goodness me, that is an extraordinary thing. You know, it's like it, the best ruby I'd ever seen in my life at that point. After 40 years, I was <laughs> seeing a lot of rubies. It's quite something. And she said to me afterwards that I took the stone and, and examined it for 22 minutes. Can you believe it? I didn't realize the time passed or whatever it was. And so when we came to the point of what was it worth and so on and so on, it was basically a complete, she said, look, whatever you, what, 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 whatever you advise. Um, because I think what was more important to her was that it was going to, to somebody who cared about the ruby rather than somebody who was just thinking about the money. You know. And of course it made you know, $30 million, four times more than any other ruby would ever fetched, and it was worth every penny of it. It was such a powerful stone that I named it after the famous Sunrise Ruby poem by Rumi. Uh, he was a 13th, 14th century poet. Um, it was, it, to me it was a magical, Hugely important stone. Wonderful, a beautiful piece too. Mm. So tell us about how is the internet affecting the auction homes, houses? Massively, of course, because I mean, when I started in London in 1974, the first auctions, I mean, it was basically the trade who were present. Very, very few private individuals would come to an auction in London. And I think nobody was bidding by phone. Phones became very common by the 80s, um, to so much so that nowadays you'll have 35 phones during an auction, for example, the one I took uh, two weeks ago. And in recent years, the last three or four years really, internet bidding, bidding online, has become a massive thing. I sold a pair of earrings, uh, I think a couple of years ago, for $6 million, which is a record uh, internet bid, uh, bid, on, bid online. So, very often now when you're taking a sale, you'll have a little screen beside you and bids will be coming up all the time from people from their homes <laughs> bidding online. I mean, it's quite incredible. It's changing everything up. Thank you, David, for sharing your experience and your massive knowledge about the auction houses. Great, great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to the MKB Leadership Show. I'm your host, Katrina Burus, and stay tuned for future episodes.